Hi, everyone. Pastor Galen, lead pastor at Shine Hills Church. Thank you so much for joining us on this podcast. We hope that these podcasts will be a real encouragement to you on your spiritual journey. You can also connect with Shine Hills at shinehills.org. Hope you enjoy the program. Across the street and around the world, Cheyenne Hills. Well, hello again, everybody, and welcome to the podcast. And thank you, Nathan, for sticking around because we got we didn't get to one issue that I wanted to, wanted okay. to talk about, and yeah. that is the this issue of a survey back in March, right, right after the school, mm-hmm. the school the school was going to send out this survey and, and uh, your team was there to say, okay, what's in the survey? Right. And they basically said, uh, we don't know, nobody knows, but we got to send out the survey. And there was some concern. You came much. to this microphone and you helped me and helped other, all of us say, hey, we probably should right. alert some people, ask some people if you know uh, people in influence to say, this is concerning because mm-hmm. it's going to go right to the students. Right. Without really the parents' knowledge, is that true? I'm not sure if I'm speaking out That's of turn exactly here. right. Okay. That's the nature of the whole argument, uh, the frustration okay. that the school district was going to allow something that was not visible to parents right. to be uh, administrated to kids. And so, and the whole thing that we've always talked about as a family policy alliance is that no entity of government should step between the, the parents and their children. Okay. And so that breaks up the whole idea of the family. Right. And so that's a dangerous thing that was... For sure. And it was a precedent. It's like, well, that was not a good precedent right. to, to do. And you you alerted us, and I think the churches responded. And, yes. and at the end of the day, they decided not to send out that survey. That's the right. way. But that wasn't... You still had some... You all still had some questions. Yes. What were those questions, and how did that all land? Well, as we finally had to engage with some legal help... Uh, to make sure that number one, it didn't go out, and number two, we wanted to see what are the questions being asked. Okay, in other places where this test has been administrated, uh, or this, as they were calling it here, a student climate survey. Okay, which is a fairly innocuous sounding. You, you wouldn't guess that this is a student climate survey that has been compiled uh, by people who are also recommending resources from Planned Parenthood and Black Lives Matter and. Uh, uh, the Southern Poverty Law Center and other places like right. that. Um, People that have a right. political agenda, historically... A very strong, a strong political one agenda. strong is, one is behind this survey, and you're exactly. saying, okay, what are the questions and what... And everywhere else, it's actually called an equity survey. Okay. Now, for most people, whenever wow. someone says an equity survey, you start to recognize, okay, this is a term of art that's become more and more used by socialists in our country. And yeah. so in our uh, school system, this was presented, and, and it's the only place that we're aware of right now, with a new name, a student climate survey. Yeah. And secondly, they kept telling us, well, it's proprietary, or it's something that we just can't, we can't talk about. Mm. And, uh, and yet, in Albany County, when it was administrated there, they actually provided a link for parents to go actually look at the test. Mm. And so did people opt out. Or, it, 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 they gave people the opportunity to opt out. Okay. Here, what they did is on uh, April the nineteenth, they sent out a text. It's a mass text program, and from my understand from parents I've talked to, uh, they get a lot of texts throughout the you know the week, uh, telling their telling the parents about different things their kids are going to do. And after a little while, because you're you're getting inundated with so many texts, you start to just kind of briefly glance at it, see if it's something that's hitting you right now, and then you move on. Mm. They sent out a mass text on April the 19th saying that by April the 30th, 11 days later, um, they need to have sent in uh, something if they want their child to opt out of the program. Okay. Secondly, if you look at the text for very long, you actually have to click through the text to another wall that takes you to a website that really never tells you that you can opt out. Oh, wow. And so the whole time you're thinking, okay, there's this thing. I don't know that I want to. And what they were told, there's nowhere that you can, you actually found out you can talk to someone and opt out. Thirdly, the only way to do that, if you want to actually see anything, is you have to go in and find one person in the entire school district and potentially see if you can get the test. Uh, actually, not the entire test. Just look at a couple questions from the test so you can get a feel for it. Right. 
And uh, well, no, I remember, I remember this discussion, yeah. and it was as I remember looking for it. And I'm not okay, so I'm not the most tech savvy person, but I'm not the worst either. Right. I mean, I know how to get around on websites and figure out things, and 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 I was looking for this as well, right. and how to opt out and what you do. And I was, I was struggling to find. Right. Okay, so what does this exactly look like, and and what do I have to do if I were a parent? And so it was one of those things, like, wow, this. This isn't real clear. Exactly. And to your point, a text, you know, to a busy parent, this yeah. is the hard part. You know, and I think one of the reasons Family Policy Alliance is so valuable is because you're able to bring attention to things. It's like, hey, this is, this, this doesn't look quite right. right. And you, parents need to sit up and take, take notice. Yeah. And I think one of the things you've done, Nathan, uh, and I think it's been the last six months has, has really, uh, has increased considerably is people's trust in the fact that, okay, Family Policy Alliance ran the flag at the top of the pole. We should pay attention to this one. Mm -hmm. And so um, thanks to you and your team for for what you do there and helping us as as pastors to, okay, we need to dig into this one and figure right. it out. And, uh, and sure enough, it, it did have some, well, we didn't know at the time because they decided not to run the survey. And we that's felt right. like, okay, that is a good win. So we we sent this in, our lawyer sent this in, and about an hour and a half later, they had chosen not to actually administrate the survey. But we still wanted to know what was on the test. Yeah. What kind of threat were our children under? Okay. And and um, that sounds very blunt, but it is true. Yeah. When you recognize the individuals uh, who were going to be, who had been designing yeah. Right. That program. It made you, okay, we got to ask this next question. And, and this is yeah. the great challenge that we're facing. So something that's heartbreaking happened two years ago at McCormick Junior High, yeah. where three posters, or at least this is what came out in the court case yesterday, three posters were placed at the school. This is what was said. I had read before that it was potentially four or five. All of them had been taken down before school even started, before kids even began to come into the school. Okay. And not only that, the day before those posters were placed, there was uh, representatives of a group here pushing for uh, a different kind of sexual lifestyle that had been in that school and had given the kids a bunch of flags. Some of them were very large flags uh, promoting an LGBTQ lifestyle, and they had blocked the students in different circumstances in the school. Hmm. And so some young uh, school kid made a very bad choice and made three, potentially four or five, we don't know, posters that were all taken down. And immediately the first person called was not the school principal. It actually was one of the leaders of the, uh, the group that had brought in all of the material the day before. They then turned around and called the press. Mm. So before you could even deal with the issue, they had tried to turn it into a political circumstance, gotcha. out of which came a bunch of ideas. And we wound up with this, this program that is pushing an agenda, very clearly pushing a radical well, agenda. Because what they're what they're fishing for, if I'm if I can use that word, is is for the systemic proof of systemic racism. And mm -hmm. so if we can get the questions, that's why you need to see the questions. What are right. they asking? Right. And how are they asking those? Because you can I know enough about st statistics. You can do a lot with questions Absolutely. and to shape right. to shape uh, surveys and whatnot. And so yeah. it's brilliant to to continue to perser persevere. Mm -hmm. So here we are, um, several months later, uh, September, and where are we at with this with the contents of the survey? Well, I, would th I of course cannot put the word words into the mouth of uh, of the gentleman who will be making the decision uh, regarding the case, but it looks. Very, very good. Okay. Very, very good. Very positive. I think it's because it's so visible. So it's been in court. You guys, it, yeah, have, as of yesterday. Is that right? Went back and mm -hmm. and uh, so is it? You know, who's who against who here? How does that? How does that flesh itself out? Well, Family Policy Alliance. This is the first th uh, first time we've ever done anything like this. It was the oh, first okay. time I'd ever been actually in a witness stand in court. Wow. Uh, so it was a new world for me. And um, but we actually had to sadly bring a, a legal action against Laramie County School District number one Okay. to get access to, number one, what the questions were, and number two, why did they persist hmm. in insisting that they can insert themselves between the parent and the child? And so we want to know those questions. Okay, so back, I'm going to go back to March because I yeah. remember I called, I talked to some school board 
uh, people, one in particular. And my understanding is they didn't know, they were wanting the contents as well. Agreed. That's okay. what I've understood as well. And so, the, and they couldn't get those answers. Mm-hmm. And so, um, I didn't know if that, did, did that come out in this? Is that, so, uh, um, why, why yeah. couldn't they get those answers? Well, that's a good question. They kept saying that the, the group down at the Western Educational Equity Assistance Center insisted that you couldn't see the questions, oh, that proprietary. it was proprietary. I remember that. And yet argument. at the same time, there yeah. is no evidence that anything that has been released to uh, thousands and thousands of people is now somehow proprietary. Okay. They never proved that. And so all of that to say, I think it's been a pretty frustrating uh, thing for a lot of people involved, even in the school district. But now, finally, there is someone who can address this in the state of Wyoming. And that's why God, I believe, has brought Family Policy Alliance of Wyoming for such a time as this. Yeah. To actually, as there are outside influences trying to break our country, trying to grab a hold of our children and move them in a different direction, yeah. there's finally someone saying, listen, we're not going to let this happen. Okay. We as people of Christ just do not believe that this is what you should be doing with our children. It's wrong, and we're going to stand up. Okay. And I believe God has answered that in a wonderful way. So, so let's say, I don't know how many days out or weeks out. When, when do you think the the judgment on this will happen? Well, from what I understand, every court right now in Wyoming is just packed, and so it's going to be a written opinion, and uh, and there are two bench trials that are going to come up before is this, again next Did this go to the Supreme Court in no, the no, state? No, no, this was a, in, a, in a court here in, okay. in Cheyenne. So let's say this, this comes out. So how do parents, how will they ever get access to the contents of this? I mean, obviously, mm-hmm. Family Policy Alliance will. Right. I assume you're going to let me in on. Absolutely. Uh, okay, so yeah. what do we do with this? Or what do you, what's, your plan? what's the plan? What I want to do, once we get the content of what is, has been, is involved in these kinds of questions. We already have some evidence that involved deeply is the whole drive toward uh, the accusation of systemic racism, okay. which has been tied with the neo-Marxist movement yep. very strongly through right. Black Lives Matter. Right. And so when we get this evidence, we want to share that with people all over the city of Cheyenne. But I want the entire state to recognize, listen, these are not things happening in Loudoun County, Virginia. Yeah. This is not happening right, in right California. In yeah. it's, it's not just in Cheyenne. We need to look this up. Um, mm. One of these days, we're going to talk about uh, a school book issue that we're finding. When we get into that, I am hearing from other places in Wyoming, places you wouldn't suspect at all, yeah. that there is a, a new kind of information constantly being pushed into uh, these school districts that destroys the innocence of children. Yeah. I had a conversation with the number one activist uh, in, in Wyoming pushing these agendas, and their point was, well, you don't want to be a book burner. And yeah. I said, well, wait a second. No, no. Whenever we talk about these kind of books, you know when you go to the movies that they have the MPAA ratings. Yeah. The, you, you don't want a little kid going in and seeing a, right. an R movie or whatever. Right. And yet what you're trying to do is taking R-rated, take R-rated material, yep. turn it into a cartoon, and put it in the hands of elementary school exactly. kids. You know, when, when I was describing this to, I, I had a couple of different meetings with, with some influential people. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just kept saying, and I think it got some traction, you know, nobody would put caffeine in a baby's bottle. Right. I mean, yeah. everybody well knows, said. okay, that you can't do that. Right. You're going to hurt this child or, you know, who knows what, and uh, maybe worse. But um, but yet, we will take content and put it in a second grader or a third grader or fourth grader's mind, and I, I think protecting the innocence of our kids at least is up to, to sixth grade. I mean, yeah. I wish it was further, but at least right. common sense says, you know, you, you wouldn't put caffeine in that child's, you know, you put too much Mountain Dew in a fifth grader, that's not a good idea either, <laughs> right. right? And so... Um, th- w- you just know these things. Right. Why do we think that content, especially sexual content, why does why does that have to be offered up? And I think, I don't know, I, I get it, not everybody has the same worldview as you and I do, but I think even common sense would say, yeah, you wouldn't put caffeine in a baby's bottle. You don't have to be a Christian to see that, right. is my, my argument. Yeah. And it seems like it's gotten some kind of kind of traction as a, as a metaphor. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so let me ask: I don't, Are these are these connected? We've got the new curriculum, Wit and Wisdom. 
is that connected to the survey? Or is that part of the survey? Is it completely separate? I believe it's a separate issue. Okay. Although I think that behind the scenes, what connects um, a lot of these different things is a new push that is nationwide to introduce information to our children that is damaging. Yeah. And so we have seen the new administration in Washington, D.C., begin to try to push into the curricula of, uh, of the entire country ideas that are contrary, common sense, na- uh, you know, yeah. just basic science and everything else. Yeah. And so there is an effort. That's why it seems like more and more and more is coming at us. Mm-hmm. That's because there is a push through a lot of different avenues. Different avenues yeah. That's why we have to be vigilant. Oh my gosh, and and informed. I mean, yeah. we're trying, and what this podcast is trying to do is do our best we can to unpack information when we get it and yeah. help help parents to hopefully make some good decisions and not be angry. You know, right. don't sin in this whole thing. But we do need to be vigilant and to try to get uh, you know some common sense in, exactly. into our um, into this realm. So I. If you, I think this is a. I think these yeah. are important topics we got to continue to try to massage and talk about so people can get some, get yeah. their heads and their hearts around these things. Yes, right. Wit, wit and wisdom, real quick. Um, I've I've just kind of basically dipped my toe into mm-hmm. to that. I know there's a lot of concern across the nation. Right. I've watched uh, YouTube about it, um, and there's I can see why where the concern comes from in the way that they're trying. Now, apparently, it's been raised the standards of kids reading. And so mm-hmm. it's, it's been effective in, in that, and that everybody wants standards to be raised. No question about that. When I questioned some content things with a school board member, the thing, one thing that was, that came out of that conversation is that, well, there are things, this is a brand new, this is brand new. So we can take certain content out. Okay. So that was said several times to me. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's part of that vigilance as parents. We, we pastors, parents, you know, Family Policy Alliance, whatever, we've, we've got to be able to say, okay, so you've, you've opened up to say if there's content that's destructive to a third grader or whatever, that that can be removed. Well, this is content we're concerned about. And, right. But we have to, be able to, have to be able to see it, get into it, understand it, and uh, point, point that out. But apparently there is... I was told that there's a pathway, so I think we need to make sure we we well, get through that, uh, jump through that door. Well, I, I think that's good, and I think um, that's a good short-term uh, way to, to move through the present circumstances. Okay. But I'll say two things. One, a book company, uh, a curriculum company, that would allow for people to use its platform to teach things that will destroy your country. At some point, we don't want to continue to award any contract or purchase their books. So, have you have you seen that in the wit and wisdom? You've actually seen content that's like, oh my gosh, this is really yes. Sir. Okay, so yeah. that I haven't seen those things, yeah. and so that's I think but, all of us have got to get our education to understand mm-hmm. uh, what's what's in it, and right. uh, and yeah. is and is that the curriculum that we have in our schools here in Cheyenne. Uh, yes, as of this year, it really? is. And so I think, uh, I think then, and this is where that vigilance, but also it takes wisdom. Um, as, we, as we are presented with the circumstances we have right now, what's the best way to walk through them? And so, and that's where just basically making sure at every step of the, um, that every step we take, we're applying wisdom and knowing that right now, that's a book that needs to go. And that's a book that needs to go. It's going to require greater vigilance right now. And then moving forward, not even dealing with people that would um, try to insert ideas like this into the mind of a third grader. You know, I think we also, and I we need to land this se- section already. I can't believe how fast 20 minutes goes by. It's fun. But I I think we need to be educated to the wrongheadedness and see it. I mean, it, I, it's nuanced. Some right. of the stuff that I saw, I was like, okay, I can see it, but I, I see it now. I, my first pass, I maybe have not have seen right. it. It's not laying there like glaring or what I saw it wasn't right. but once you see it you go oh wow yeah I get it this is a this is a step in that direction right. of well really a Marxist idea the oppressed and oppressor is in mm-hmm. there mm-hmm. Um, or the um, some of the uh, the just the values uh, you would mm-hmm. say and so um, advocating suicide was another oh yeah one. I yeah. saw that just no, I, that was true I saw that one yeah. that was that was actually one I pointed out they mm-hmm. said well we can take that out like okay, well, yeah. we should. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, let's let's do that right away. Yeah. 
Well, anyway, uh, Nathan, thank you again for sticking around, for being our eyes and ears in our in our community. And and I do. I think I, I would just encourage everyone to be praying for you and your ministry too. It's a, you know you're out there, um, you're you're right in, in the center of of the the ever of everything, and to keep your strength and courage up i i hope and pray for you too brother so thanks 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 for tuning in and as we always say be strong and very courageous god bless you all Mm